Good afternoon, delegates of the General Conference. Let us be in order. Let us be in order. As you're moving to your seats, I'm going to begin by introducing myself. When we're settled, we'll have a word of prayer before we do anything else. My name is Warner Brown. I am the bishop of the San Francisco area in the United States. That's the California Nevada Annual Conference. Grace and peace to you in the name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. I'm pausing a moment as others are moving quickly into their seats. I appreciate you making it possible for us to start promptly after you have had a very long morning. Appreciate all of you that are in your seats and I ask your patience as other delegates are seated. We'll give them a few more minutes. All right, the Lord be with you. Let us pray. Gracious God, we gather as your people. Coming from across this earth, gathering to be your church. We come with many aspirations for your people on our hearts. Guide us as we make decisions that will shape the direction of our movement to be a people who make disciples of Jesus Christ for the transformation of the world. Oh God, let your spirit be in the midst of us. And may our life together be guided by that spirit. In those moments when our passions may rise, calm us, spirit. Remember that those we disagree with love you too and are loved by you. Help us to recall that we are a people who live by grace. And may we extend that grace to those we don't understand, to those we lose patience with, to those who say and do things we don't necessarily like. But Lord, keep working on us. May we go on to perfection in love. And in the meantime, let us seek to do the work of perfecting the legislation before us. Please make us whole, O oh God, and guide us. This we pray in Christ Jesus' name. Amen. I recognize a white card in this direction. Would you come to microphone six? Thank you, Bishop. Scott Campbell, New England Conference. I move that the General Conference request a declaratory decision from the Judicial Council as to whether any aspect of the legislation known as Plan UMC 
adopted by the General Conference earlier today is in conflict with the Constitution of the Church. In particular, does the plan conflict with Article 16.8 or 16.9? And if I have a second, I would just like to speak to it ever so briefly. Let me ask the maker of the motion to bear with the chair for a moment. Your motion, if it is seconded and we move forward, will require a vote, and we need the assistance of our secretary to make a couple of announcements before we're ready to do that. Would you allow us to make those and that? Stay right where you are, let the announcements be made, and then we can move directly to your motion. I need to explain to you something about the interpretation process. When we say speak slowly, we do not mean speak slowly. We mean say a whole sentence, take a good breath, and start on your next sentence. It's not an issue of interpreting individual words. It's an, in an issue of interpreting the sense of the sentence. So I would ask you to please speak in complete sentences, or at least complete intelligible phrases, and then pause, take a deep breath, and go on. I know it is not the most effective way of preaching a sermon, but you're not here preaching a sermon, you're here helping us communicate with one another. You'll note that your keypads have been turned off. When it comes time to vote, when we're close to a vote, please turn them back on. You do, do not need to turn them on immediately. Save the battery power. There will be fewer of them not functioning if you don't just have them on all the time. And lastly, some of you have been trying to send me announcements and other information vital to the progress of the General Conference. However, you've been sending it to me by way of email. My computer is open, but I am not doing email. I don't have time to do email. If you need to get a message to me, please use the pages to bring the message on paper. Thank you. Thank you. And I will also be practicing speaking slower. At microphone six, your motion is in order. Would you restate it? Yes, Bishop. I move that the General Conference requests a declaratory decision from the Judicial Council as to whether any aspect of the legislation known as Plan UMC passed earlier today by the General Conference is in conflict with the Constitution of the Church. In particular, does the plan conflict with Article 16.8 or 16.9? Is there a second? I hear a second. This action requires 20% of the body to refer. What is your pleasure? Would the body refer this item for review by the Judicial Council? If you would, you must turn on your voting machines. If you wish to vote in favor of referral, you would press one. If you oppose referral, press two. Vote now. Five seconds. Okay, this ballot is closed. Let's wait for the results.
you have referred. Thank you. I see a white card here. Would you come to microphone six? Name and conference, please. Hello, Bishop Adam Hamilton. I'm at the Kansas East Annual Conference, a pastor in the United States. And uh, I have a uh, motion I'd like to make, or permission actually, uh, from the body for information to be printed in tomorrow's DCA. Uh, and if I have a second, I'd like to speak to it. Is there a second? Okay. Right. Tomorrow, it's my intention to offer an amendment by substitution to a piece of legislation that we'll consider tomorrow, that will be before the body tomorrow, as has been done previously this week. I'd like to provide the material in a written form to allow for accurate and informed discussion, as well as to assist our translators. And uh, my motion is to allow for this to be proposed amendment to be printed in the DCA as a proposal for consideration listed as not a committee action with all authors listed. And it has nothing to do with what we've talked about today. All right. You have heard the motion. It has been seconded. If you would approve authorizing this material being printed and available to you in tomorrow's DCA, uh, would you be prepared to vote? I see a question. Is, is microphone six? Stephen Rockler, Susquehanna Conference layperson. My question, Bishop, is if it would be appropriate to get a brief description of what this would be about prior to voting. That's an order. Would you give more information? Sure. It's only one page, not 79 pages. And uh, this has to do with a piece of legislation from the Global Young People's Legislation. And it relates to um, how we talk about our differences regarding homosexuality. All right, and answer your question. All right, this matter is before you. If you would approve printing of this material, you would vote yes. If you do not want it printed, you would vote no. Turn on machines, let's vote now. Five seconds. This vote is closed. Let's wait results. You have agreed to print the material. Thank you. We have committees. Yes. Fitzgerald Reese, Secretary of the General Conference, just a reminder that this needs to be in digital format and in by 3 o'clock this afternoon. All right, we're ready to proceed with the calendar items. Thank you, Bishop Brown, General Conference Delegation, Guy Ames from Oklahoma, representing again the Conference's Legislative Committee. I want you to turn with me in your DCA to page 2108, item number 204. That item, that petition, is found on your advanced DCA, page 342. After considerable debate, our legislative committee voted closely to refer this to the standing committee on Central Conference Matters, one of the observations that we have made as a legislative committee is that we have some incredibly gifted, growing, unique, and diverse provincial and annual conferences all throughout our Central Conferences. And many in our committee, in fact, the majority believe that 
those matters have so much nuance, so much difference, that it would be prudent to ask the Standing Committee on Central Conference Matters to take up this petition. And for that reason, we are asking you to vote to refer. All right, that is before you. Recognize the green card here. I under, uh, name and conference, and I understand this is a statement in favor. Yes. Jeff Jernigan, North Georgia, Lay. I want to thank the body for giving us a time to bring this back up today and some time for some holy conferencing. Uh, and I want to stand in support of referring this after some great conversations with people in all parties. Um, we think this is a great idea and we are looking forward to working together to find solutions that work for both geographic and proportional representation. Thank you for giving us the time to uh, start these discussions that I think are going to lead to fruit four years from now. Thank you. Is there anyone that wishes to speak against? I see no one. Therefore, I believe you are ready to vote. If you would refer this matter, you would press 1 for yes. If you do not wish to refer this matter, you would press 2 for no. Vote now. Five seconds. This ballot is closed. Thank you. We'll wait results. You have referred. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. We appreciate the work of this committee, the next committee. Tracy Malone. Tracy Smith Malone, clergy, Northern Illinois Annual Conference. Bishop, before I introduce the petition that is before us, a quick moment of privilege. Yes. I just want to introduce the leadership team Thank you. of Church and Society A. I was honored to serve as the chairperson of the committee. Um, my vice chair was Raymond Monde Matumbo, secretary Terry Ray Chatlin, and subcommittee chairpersons Oliver Green, Wee Chang, and Bethany Amy. With me today and sharing on this petition that I will place before you is the Reverend Wee Chang. Thank you for your leadership. One clarification, is there a uh, minority report associated with this? Yes, it is. And um, after I introduce it, I will um, place that back before you, Bishop, for you Alrighty. to acknowledge the person who's on stage to bring it. All righty. Thank you. The item before us is found on page number 2,187 of your DCA, 2,187 of your DCA. It is calendar number 439, calendar number 439. It can be found on page 222 of the advanced DCA, 222 of your advanced DCA. It is petition number 20138, 20138. The title of this particular petition is Opposition to Israeli Settlements in Palestinian Land. 
This particular petition acknowledges that the best way for peace in the Holy Land is for there to be a safe, secure Israel next to a safe, secure Palestine. That requires a contiguous, viable Palestine. This petition calls for an end to military occupation and full respect for the human rights of all under international law. Friends, the legislative committee overwhelmingly voted to support to adopt this petition. I want to invite Wee Chang, who was a subcommittee chairperson, to come and share the rationale before we hear the minority report. I practiced it before. Jumbo, did I say right? We Chang from New England Conference. Again, I'm speaking from this mic for the first time. The petition is, uh, I want you to pay attention to the title of the petition, Opposition to Israeli Settlement in Palestine Land. Our Book of Discipline has a number of resolutions that deals with this important international matter. And this particular resolution and this petition is speak, speak to how we approach the issue of Israeli illegal military settlements in the Palestinian land. There are other petitions actually on next pages and following pages of your DCA. The Let's petitions. ask you to keep on the presentation of the petition before us, please. Oh, can I do that? Oof. Yeah, please continue. Right. And stay focused on what's before us yes. to present it. So I want you to know that there are other resolutions and petitions that deals with the general uh, Israeli-Palestine uh, conflict and how to deal with that. This is specific to the settlement. And if I may, I already talked to the uh, cameraman that I want to show you just the one informational ma map that specific to this uh, settlement. Would that be allowed? Well, let me suggest that initially we need to present it, and then we'll decide which one of the two we're going to deal with. So just enough to present it so the body can know this. If the body chooses to work on this petition, you'll have ample time to debate it. Yes, if you choose majority report, we'll have a lot of fun. Thank you. And we have a minority report. Again, this is the only question we will be dealing with now is whether or not to substitute the minority report for the committee's recommended report that was just introduced to you. Thank you, Bishop. I'm Dan Bryant, clergy from East Ohio. And I'd like to thank the Bishop and delegates of General Conference for the opportunity to submit this minority report. We submit this minority report because we believe that there is a better way to approaching peacemaking than what is offered in a petition that emerged from the committee. The conflict between Israelis and Palestinians is complex, and it has been sustained by both sides. We feel that our stance as a church ought to be to say to both Israeli and Palestinians, we hear and recognize the suffering that you experience due to the conflict but we will not participate in any activity that isolates or demonizes one side or the other. To end the occupation, we need to help both sides overcome fear of one another and of the world and support their movement towards sitting down and agreeing to a just solution. Boycott will only increase the fear of the Israelis and their sense of isolation and make a political solution less likely. Boycott will make assertions of singular blame that do not advance the prospects of peace. They ramp up divisions and create an atmosphere of intolerance, undercutting prospects for building effective working alliances to resolve conflict. 
We desire to decrease the fear and mistrust that exist on both sides by rejecting punitive and isolating measures, such as boycott that is mentioned in this petition and thus help return to the negotiating table and a two-state solution. President Obama recently affirmed and denounced both boycott and divestment when he said, where there are efforts to boycott and divest from Israel, we will stand against them. Last month, the presiding bishop of the Episcopal Church spoke in favor of a positive investment approach, saying it's not going to be helpful to endorse divestment or boycotts of Israel that will only end in punishing Palestinians economically. We feel it's important to have clear language focusing on trust building between the Israelis and Palestinians and rejecting the punitive measure of a boycott. And this language is not stated in the other resolutions currently in the Book of Resolutions. Therefore, we encourage support of this minority report as a constructive, positive vehicle towards peacemaking. The question before us is whether you wish to substitute the minority report for the majority report. That's the issue. Microphone nine, please. Please state the name and conference and the purpose of rising. Tina Whitehead, laity. Western Pennsylvania Conference, and I speak in favor of the petition as amended and recommended by the committee. I serve as a conference volunteer missionary from Western Pennsylvania to Israel-Palestine. For the past 10 years, I have been responding to a deep sense of call to be a voice for the voiceless. The voice that I speak is the voice of the Palestinian people, and their story has changed my life. For six months of each of the past six years, I have been living in Jerusalem, just minutes from the West Bank and Bethlehem. I would like to read from the petition as printed on page 223 of the ADCA to help you see what I see on a daily basis. Whereas the continuing confiscation of Palestinian land for construction of settlements and the building of a segregation wall violates human rights, subverts the peace process, destroys the hope of both Israelis and Palestinians who are working for and longing for peace, and fosters a sense of desperation that can only lead to further violence. And whereas continued and often intensified curfews and closures, dehumanizing checkpoints, home demolitions, uprooted trees, bulldozed fields, and confiscation of Palestinian land and water by the government of Israel have devastated economic infrastructure and development in the West Bank and Gaza, have caused a massive deterioration of the living standards of all Palestinians and an increasing sense of hopelessness and frustration. I live a 10 minute walk from that wall. When I leave my apartment in the morning, I look to the left and I look to the right and I see Israeli settlements that are expanding today and tomorrow on stolen Palestinian land. These settlements are one of the main obstacles to peace in that part of the world. When I walk 10 minutes away, I come up against this wall and I have to pass through a checkpoint. And at that checkpoint every morning are between two and 3,000 Palestinians from Bethlehem who are the lucky ones who have permits, who are trying to come to Jerusalem to pray, to work for medical reasons. The minority port report silences the Palestinian voice by removing these paragraphs as well as other references to daily facts on the ground in East Jerusalem and the West Bank. The main petition draws attention to the Kairos Palestine document, the call of our Palestinian Christian brothers and sisters for an end to military occupation and human rights violations through nonviolent actions. Last night, Reverend Twait of the World Council of Churches addressed the crisis of the Christian community in the Middle East 
and specifically in Palestine. Please wrap up. You're almost out of time. And challenged us to stand in costly solidarity with this community. Last Friday night, we heard the cry of another people whose voice has been silenced for 500 years. Their story is the Palestinian story, and I urge you to vote against the Minority Report. All right, that was a statement against substituting. Now, just so that the, you can help the chair keep uh, follow your rules, if you are wishing to speak in favor of substitution, use the use the uh, the green card. If you are against, please use the orange card. All right, thank you. Now I'm going to try to move around the room as much as possible. Um, I s may ask. Please rise and state your reason for rising. Steve Wood, clergy, North Georgia, a point of order. What, state your point of order and... In this vote, in using the voting devices, I would like to confirm that we have to press the number and the send button, Bishop. Is that correct? That is correct. Thank you. Thank you very much. All right. Now that was a, a, against, I need a four. Point of inquiry. Where's the point of inquiry? That was a point of inquiry. Um, right here. Microphone one. Thank you, Bishop. My name's Bill Stikes. I'm a lay person from North Georgia, and I rise in favor of substituting the minority report for the petition as printed. Um, I think the Minority Report is superior in one way, um, and that is it focuses on uh, what, what I like to call in the committee the middle way, which is keeping dehumanizing language away from either side. Um, while facts are presented in the resolution as written, the Minority Report instead focuses on the problem, which is Israeli occupation and focuses on positive ways to end that. It's also very short, which means it's easy to read. Uh, I would support the minority report because it does recognize Israel must end its occupation and settlement building, but it, it does that in a way that does not dehumanize the Israeli people. I think it's ineffective to criticize people while dehumanizing them at the same time. I feel the minority report then is more effective because I believe it would reach more people because it uses positive language while still speaking out against the injustice that is present. It does not deny that injustice is taking place. It is unjust what Israel is doing to the Palestinian land. But the minority report states that injustice in a manner that does not dehumanize. That's why I would urge this body to support the Minority Report. Thank you. Thank you. We've had one and one. I'm looking in the way back right here. Uh, I'm going all the way to the back near the corner. Not you, not you, sir. I saw a person that was seated that had a card up. Who was the other person back there? Unless you got out of, uh, yeah, that card that's waving now. All the way in the back, I think the last row, there's a person that waved the card that's still seated. Yes, 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 you started to get up. Yes, you, sir. Please come to microphone eight. Bishop from the Detroit Conference, United States, this is Charles Boyu. I did not want to speak. We had developed a strategy to help the bishop recognize people who are on the borderline. And so well, my I'm car was raised the for the gentleman who was attempting to come. Well, let me just point out uh, that that is against your rules. 
and I'm going to do my level best to follow your rules if you help me. Uh, so we're going to try again uh, to give the against a chance, and we're going to go to the center right here. Yes, the person in the light shirt. Microphone 11. Thank you, Bishop. David Hosey, laity, Baltimore, Washington, United States. For a year and a half, I served as a young adult missionary serving in Israel and Palestine. And each day I saw the effects of the Israeli occupation on the Palestinian people. Destroyed homes, packed checkpoints, shattered lives. The language that we have had in our book of resolutions on this situation speaks to the need for action, for nonviolent moral action, for action in the tradition of the civil rights movement and of the anti-apartheid movement. It is this action that Palestinians, including Palestinian Christians, are asking us to take. No more words without action to back them up. The people of Israel and Palestine have had plenty of words. What is needed is nonviolent steps that can be taken in order to bring justice and peace to that land. Justice and peace. I urge you to consider the type of nonviolent actions that we can take as a body, including actions of boycott and divestment, rather than having the, those possibilities for action eliminated by the minority report. Again, I would urge you to take the advice of Deuteronomy 16.22, justice and only justice shall you pursue so that you and your children may inherit the land. Justice and nonviolent action are the words of the day. I urge you not to support substitution, but instead to support the majority report. Thank you. All right, does anyone wish to speak in favor of substitution? I see, uh, recognize a person, yes. Would you go to the closest microphone? Donna Schlitt, Lay, Texas Annual Conference. I rise to speak on behalf of the Minority Report as a church, it is important that we play the role of peacemaker. When we come on one side or the other of an issue, we negate our ability to be peacemaker. I have been in Israel. I have seen that deplorable wall, and no one wants that wall down more than I. But it's important that we, as a church, play the role of peacemaker. Peace has a better chance of arriving when both sides are economically sound. So I urge you to support the minority report. All right, you have had two speeches for and two speeches against. You can legitimately move forward if you are ready. All right. Um, I okay. We've had three. I need to recognize. Um, I'm sorry. We've had three in favor, and we can get one more against. I'm going to go to the person that's uh, yes, sir. Uh, Denny Kuhn, clergy, Iowa Conference. 
I rise to speak against the Minority Report. About a year ago, I met with a Palestinian farmer whose name is Daud, and he's, his farm is just outside Bethlehem. His family has had this farm for many years, but currently, the way the situation is, they have a hard time collecting water, they have a hard time getting their crops to the market, and after Dowd visited with me and told me about his situation, the last thing he asked me was, how can you help? Dowd thinks that the best approach at this particular time is to try divestments and boycotts because the countries are not coming to the table for peace talks. And so, I think the majority report would help us perhaps put some pressure on the countries to come together. I want peace as well. So does Dowd. And I think he and his family are having a hard time trying to raise their crops and live as a peaceful person. So I would encourage us to uh, not support the minority report. Thank you. We have had three speeches for and three speeches against. This means it's time for you to make a decision. If you would prepare to vote. I see a white card before we vote. Would you rise and, and explain your reason for rising? Sarah Ann Swenson, lay delegate from Minnesota. I have some information for clarity. Um, I think uh, the information will probably help once we've decided which document we're working on. We're only dealing with the question of substitution yes. or not substitution. With all due respect, I think it would help now. Uh, how, uh, can you say a little bit more without getting into the detail of how that's going to help the substitution decision and not debate the, the uh, proposal? Absolutely. They are purely financial statistics from the U.S. Department of Defense. I think those statistics will be helpful with either report we're working on. I don't think they'll help us make this decision, so I'm going to rule that out of order. Thank you. You're now prepared to vote. If you wish to substitute the minority report, you will press 1 and then send. If you do not want to substitute, you like the, may, the committee's work you will press 2 and send. Please vote now. Five seconds. This vote is closed. We'll await the results. You have not substituted. We will be working on the committee's recommendation. Thank you. Let us continue. Okay. We are, we are ready for the discussion. I wanted to make sure that you're, you're available. Thank you. Yes, I see an a inquiry, a microphone 10. State your reason for rising. Point of order. State your point of order. I'm Tom Berlin from Virginia in the U.S., clergy. Bishop, several people at my table were not sure what we were voting on. We knew what we were voting on, but we were not sure what one and two were designated to. I'm curious if others in the House had that problem since the vote was very close. Thank you for your inquiry, but I just remind you, I have followed uh, the rules as you have adopted them the other day, and we have followed that procedure. Thank you. We are now ready to address the committee's report. Does anyone wish to speak to the report it is, as it is before you? I see it recognize a person here. Ask you to go to the closest microphone. Thank you. Microphone two. 
Sarah Ann Swenson, lay delegate from Minnesota. I strongly encourage us to uphold um, standing with the Israel Palestine by continuing to offer um, boycotts of Israeli goods. The statistics that I wanted to offer from the U.S. Department of Defense state that every year we give three billion dollars just in foreign aid to Israel. With military aid, that is five billion dollars. All in all, that's one-fifth of our foreign aid budget. We only give 200 million or 0.005 percent of what we give to Israel to Palestine. So whatever small contributions we can make to upholding the existence and survival of the Palestinian people uh, is essential to offer as a, as a peacemaking body, as a church. Um, by continuing to uphold this, we are standing with peace, we're standing with coexistence, and we are working in the direction of justice. Thank you. Thank you. Is there someone wish to speak against? I see a person at the very end of the plenary room. Microphone eight, please. My name is Yekaterina Zubukova from Eastern Russia and Central Asia. And I want to say against uh, the petition I don't think we will be able to end the war because I think that uh, Palestinians and Muslims will not finish an, until the whole Israel belongs to the House Islam and Israel will not stop until all the land belongs as the, they believe that God gave them. I think we are the church, we should not be in, uh, involved in politics. I think we are a church about making disciples of Christ. And I think it would be great if we send missionaries and go there and make disciples among Palestinians and make disciples of Jesus among the Israelites. And I think the priests of peace will bring peace to the land. Thank you. Someone wish to speak for? All right, I'm right here in the center of the room. Yes, sir. Microphone six. Armando Aureliano is Ohio clergy. I support this um, uh, petition. We have a long standing history in our church that we always stand with the uh, marginalized people. So, this act of divestment is a peaceful and nonviolent act that we make a stand to those who were disadvantaged and being a victim on this occasion, at this time. Thank you. Thank you. Does someone wish to speak against? Right over here, sir. Thank you, Bishop. My name is Henry Lesner, North Texas Conference. I'm lay. In my career, I've had the opportunity to travel in the Middle East for 15 years. I am dealing with government officials. I've been to all the countries that surround Israel many times. I assure you that this is not a simple Israel versus Palestine issue. I, this is a complex regional issue the small state of Israel, which we support politically, is surrounded by enemies who wish it to be destroyed and will not have peace until it is destroyed. I strongly urge you to support them, not to support this, this petition because we are only adding fuel to the fire and giving more people more reasons to think they have more support to get rid of Israel. This is not a simple thing. It is political in that region. We are not hitting the issue here at all. Thank you. All right. We have heard two and two. Does someone wish to speak? All right. Um, and who's waving? 
I see a white card here. Let me ask the reason for your rising. Uh, actually, I was recognizing the one behind you. Point of order. Go to your microphone and state your point of order. Clarence Brown, uh, Virginia clergy. Uh, as we pursue the thought of boycott, uh, uh, would you I speak up or directly into the mic? Uh, some of us are having trouble hearing you. Yes, sir. Um, as it pertains to name, engaging- Name and conference again, please. Clarence Brown, Virginia clergy. Thank you. Um, we have an established process for engaging boycott that is in our book uh, of resolutions. Uh, uh, sir, I'm gonna ask, um, state the re your point of order. Well, if we have not engaged the process we've established in our book of resolutions for prom promoting boycott, uh, then I think that we might be out of order with this motion. Okay, that sounds like a, a speech against uh, this motion rather than uh, a point of order around our parliamentary rules. Thank you, and, and uh, I, I am going to call upon a speech in favor. And um, I'm gonna, please don't call. I am trying to scour the room, and I know they're passionate ones. I'm coming back. I'm going to recognize the person in the back near my, between uh, seven and eight. Yes, ma'am. Would you, uh, the woman, please? Thank you. Bishop, Bishop Connie Semi Melia from the Mindanao Philippines Annual Conference. I strongly support the majority report and for us to pass this petition because this petition is our concrete action of responding to the call of our Palestinian Christian brothers and sisters who are calling for help. They have the Kairos document, which challenges the whole Christendom, the whole Christian people, to accompany our words with actions. And one of the strategies and concrete action to respond to their need is through divestment. The reason why we are for divestment is because it is a moral and non-violent action. We have seen the result of divestment when we responded to the call of our African people during the apartheid regime. By divesting our resources to the companies that support apartheid, we were able to concretely say no to the injustices that is happening there. Moreover, the petition to divest has a related petition in Advanced Daily Advocate, page 856. That petition was put forward too please by our slow general, down. Please, please slow by our down. general uh, agencies like General Board of Global Ministries and General Board of Church and Society, and also supported by six annual conferences: the Baltimore Washington Co Conference, California Pacific, Minnesota, New England, North Illinois, and West Ohio. It means that the petition to divest and to work for that divestment had undergone a long series of discernment, prayer, engagement, and advocacy. I would like also to let us know that even the international community is supporting this one, like the Peace for Life and the World Council of Churches. In fact, the World Council of Churches has even an EAP program. And lastly, Bishop, this call to uphold this divestment goes back to our Methodist tradition. As Methodist, we believe that there is no holiness but social holiness. There is no religion but social religion. Therefore, the piety of our hearts must be manifested in the society where we belong. We could not therefore allow our resources to be used for the suffering of other people. We could not allow to get interest from the death of the innocent people. The Christian faith, where it was able to turn the Please world upside up. down, is because 
the power, the love for power and greed has been defeated by the power of Christ's liberating love. Please support this petition. Thank you. All right. Now, let me state where we are. I see a number of white cards. Uh, your position is you have had three and three, and we are prepared to go to a vote. And so I want to find out the reason for your inquiry, and I'll, I'll check these out, and then we're going to go to immediately to a vote. I'll begin here at microphone nine. Reason Tina, for your inquiry. Tina Whitehead, a laity, Western Pennsylvania. Uh, I appreciate the passion that's being spoken Please to this. Please state the reason for your inquiry. Uh, we are addressing the wrong issue. This oh. petition is not about divestment. Uh, we are so passionate about that issue that we have jumped the gun. This issue is only about supporting the Palestinian voice, the Palestinian okay. Christian church. It is not about divestment. Thank you for that clarification. Um, there was a, a question here. Bishop. State the reason for your inquiry. Rudolf Marab, Liberia Lady. Am I in order to provide an amendment? No, not at this point. Thank you. Any other questions? All right, I turn to the representative of the committee. Uh, question over here. Microphone one. Thank you, Bishop. I'm Jamie Jenkins, clergy from North Please Georgia. Please speak right into that mic. Some of us can't hear you. Yes, J Bishop Jamie Jenkins, clergy from North Georgia. Uh, in response to the comment I just made, I just would like to ask a question. Question? State your question. If this uh, petition is not about divestment, I would ask the uh, committee to explain to me uh, number one, on the top of page 224. Okay. And then down about middle of the page, under we urge all United Methodist in the US, number two, where whereas the word divestment's not used, I wish I could have an explanation for all those All right, two. we'll ask Thank the you. committee to respond to your question, then they make their closing statement and you get to vote. Thank you, would you answer his question? So is this the answer or a closing statement? First the answer. Okay, so please count the time. This is the answer to the question. This doesn't count yes. against your time. This is not directly calling for divestment. The number one on page top of 224, it says all nations to prohibit any financial support. It's calling nations. Any financial support by individuals and organizations for the construction and maintenance of the settlements. So there's a slight difference between divesting in a company and it's calling for just the uh, financial support directly. All right. It is about the import of products that is made uh, in the uh, illegally settled, settled land. It clearly said United Methodist Church does not support a boycott of products made in Israel. It only opposed to the products made by Israeli companies supporting ongoing military occupation. So I think there is a difference. All right, thank you, the question. Now, your closing statement, and this is timed. Before I speak, I wanted to show you this uh, map, which changed my own personal uh, opinion about this matter. If somebody can zoom this in. Can the camera zoom in so that you can show the map? I think they can't do it. No? One is coming from the left. Can you continue uh, uh, your presentation and we'll yes, show please. the map as soon as possible. I recently hear a story, real story about uh, uh, two brothers. It was a uh, younger brother was three years old and older brother was five and they were playing in their yard and the uh, younger brother fell into a deep hole into the darkness and start to cry. And five-year-old brother didn't know how to save him. He didn't have enough power, enough strength. So he started to cry. He started to cry louder and louder. 
And he cried even louder than this younger brother who was in the hall because that's all he could do. And then his parents and others came and saved that younger brother. This petition is a call from our fellow Christians in Palestine asking us simply to cry with them as loud, as faithfully, and with all our means as possible. We don't have any military power. We don't have all the finance of the institutions. All we have is our voice, our action, and small decision that we can make. Please, if you see this map, cry with our brothers and sisters in Palestine. Thank you. I think the camera is able to see oh. the map now if you want to explain what you were saying about the map. So, yes. Now say what you wanted to say about it. If you look at it, the green at the right corner is uh, before 1946, and green is a Palestinian land, and white is an Israeli land. The third one, if, <laughs> this one, oops, yes. This one is a 1967. Last 40 years, illegal and militaristic occupation took more than half of Palestine rifle land. Israeli is the land of Israel expect, expanding. It's not being diminished. It's actually the land of Palestinians that have been occupied. That's why they are crying. Please cry with them. All right, thank you. This matter is now before you. If, if you would uh, support the recommendation of the committee, you would vote one, yes, and send. If you do not support the committee, you would press two, no, and send. Please vote now. Five seconds. This ballot is closed. Let's await the results. You have supported the committee's recommendation. Thank you. Let's move to the next calendar item. Good afternoon. Jessica Vargo, laity from East Ohio, United States. Finance and Administration Legislative Committee has one petition to bring forward at this time. It's related to the petition that we just moved on. This one deals with divestment. If you look, you're going to need um, both the DCA and the advanced DCA. On the DCA, we're looking at page 2,191. That's 2,191. We're looking at calendar item 471. It's on the bottom of that page and it continues on to the next page. In the advanced DCA, you will want to have page 856 open. That's 856. To share the rationale and the amendments that the Legislative Committee took action on, I'm going to invite a very active member of our Legislative Committee and a member of the subcommittee that spent extensive time on this particular petition to come forward, Bonnie Martin from New England, laity. Good afternoon. Jessica has pointed you to the appropriate pages you'll need to have in front of you, and I am from the New England Conference, I'm pleased to share with you the rationale for the uh, changes that were made to the original petition by the Legislative Committee. I want to say thanks to all of those who actively and courageously speak for peace in the Holy Land and wish to support both Palestinians and Israelis. 
look forward to a day when fear will subside and the polarized parties will come together. And I hope that the church could be like the images we've seen in worship, the model of Jesus calming the waters. The process for moving to divestment in the United Methodist Church is very different from the process of moving to boycott. The amendments to the petition attempted to bring the potential process for moving toward divestment into alignment with the previous processes used by the United Methodist denomination. The, the first sentence is substituted, and that is in the DCA, um, the underline the very bottom page 2191, carrying over into the top. That language, more appropriately, assigns responsibility to manage our assets and socially responsible investing to the General Board of Pensions and Health Benefits. That is the body that is your fiduciary manager, and they are responsible by the Book of Discipline for managing our investments, socially responsible investing, and for considering the matter of potential divestment. The top of page 2192, there's another underlined section that replaces the first, the next two paragraphs in the original petition. Again, this language moves us back to closer alignment with the ways in which the United Methodist Church, through the General Board of Pensions and Health Benefits, moved to divestment in Sudan and South Africa. This language actually aligns us with the processes that we have used in the past. It also gives the General Board of Pensions and Health Benefits a clear set of guidelines for ongoing conversations and uses the same, again, procedure that was used before, the Sullivan principles were used to assist the general board to move towards divestment in South Africa. However, this would apply to all companies that the general board works with and would not target just a few companies. It also adds a positive rather than a punitive option for Please social begin to wrap justice up. work. The General Board of Pensions has a positive social investing purpose lending program. And to begin to use their resources to make a difference in Palestine, the majority of the Legislative Committee believed would be a more productive way to be peace builders in the Middle East. We believe this report will have more impact, will align with our denominational call to do no harm, and to love even those who are acting in ways that we believe are counterproductive, but encourage us to create collaborative peace efforts using our assets positively. Thank you. There is a minority report. Hello, brothers and sisters. I'm Lonnie Chafin from the Northern Illinois Conference. I rise because Christians are being driven out of the Holy Land and we are invested on one side of the Israeli-Palestine equation, and it's not the side of those who are poor or, or Palestinian. In 2008, the General Conference was to consider a petition on divestment, but it was pulled so that we could have more conversation with the companies involved. We have had that conversation, and the conclusion from those involved with the conversation is that to talk further is futile, that the companies will not change their behavior in investing in the occupation. They are committed to what they are doing, and by owning stocks and trying to engage them, they will, it will lead to no change. So I hope you will choose the minority report so that we can finally pick up the uh, petition on, on divestment that was initiated uh, four years ago. The committee position does not report on the dialogue or even about divestment. The committee petition changes the subject. It talks about Rugi principles, but they will have no impact on Palestine. They have no impact on what a company might do in Palestine. In fact, the Rugi principles, once a company does their examination, isn't even publicly shared with the, with the investing public. 
the committee petition changes the subject from, from divestment because they believe the general boards and not the general conference should decide whether moral issues are to be considered in investment decisions. This is not true. We have never delegated moral decisions on investments to others. The general conference retains this authority. In paragraph 1504 of the discipline, it clearly states that the general boards shall perform its duties in the spirit of the church's mandate for inclusiveness and racial and social justice. The church's moral decision about the occupation is well established, long standing. It aligns with UN resolutions, US foreign policy. 70% of Israeli Jews want to end the occupation. 51% would do it today if they could get a Palestinian renunciation of violence. My friends, the Palestinian Christians are leading a turn from, pal from violence to nonviolent action in Palestine. This is an overdue event in the life of the Israel-Palestine uh, challenges. We must support them. They have asked us for our support and have said in their Kairos document, quote, we challenge any church who invests either directly or indirectly in companies who support the occupation. They are talking to us. We invest in the occupation. How can we say the Please separation? Please wrap up. How can we say the separation wall is immoral and at the same time profit from its expansion? How can we say that demolition of Palestinians' homes for the construction of Jewish-only cities is immoral and at the same time make a little money off of the effort? How can we con denounce the control of the movement of Palestinian persons and at the same time our investments sell biometric measuring, measuring machine, machines? Please support the Minority Report. Thank you. All right. The question before us, and I'm going to start recognizing persons, let's clarify what we're talking about. We're talking about whether we substitute the minority report for the committee's report. If you favor substitution, you'll hold up a green card. If you do not, the orange card. I will begin here speech against. Microphone five. I'm Kevin Goodwin, layperson, Peninsula of Delaware. Please Daniel speak Johnson. right into that mic. Thank you. Kevin Goodwin, lady, Peninsula of Delaware Annual Conference. I am in support of the majority of the report. The adoption of the minority report would not only affect the General Board of Pension and Health Benefits, but every foundation, college, and annual conference with invested funds. When we discussed divestment at the last meeting of the Africa University Development Committee, who's in charge with raising scholarship funds for Africa University students, they also agreed with the following concerns. First, the Minority Report represents a policy, sh a policy shift. For the first time, General Conference will name specific companies not to own. This could open up the floodgates in 2016 because we also identified about 15 to 20 other book of resolutions that we think people would bring companies for, prime example being FedEx by the Native Americans because of the naming rights of the Washington Redskins Stadium. Second point, it moves from judging companies from what they make, such as tobacco, alcohol, and pornography, to how their products are used. In closing, one of the United Methodist values is trust. Let's trust our agency assigned with the task of investing our funds to do their job of balancing our social principles and their fiduciary duty for their 91,000 participants. I urge everyone to vote for the majority report. Thank you. All right. Um, a speech in favor of substituting the minority reports in order, and I'll call upon the gentleman that's close to microphone six in the front. Thank you. Yes, sir, you. My name is Fundo Zonke 
from South Africa. Having to know being born and growing up in an unjust system. I think the last petition, it encourages me about the United Methodist Church. And this one, it's another step moving forward. And we need as a church to speak a clear message by words and by action without fear or favor. And there is no monetary value that can be put on the dignity and the human lives. I therefore support the minority report. I urge this body to support it. By doing so, we will be doing or will be put in action the service of repentance. I thank you. Thank you. A speech against. I see one uh, in the back. Yes, sir, you. Microphone six. Bob Long, Oklahoma Annual Conference, clergy, obviously USA. I too believe that we should be involved in a positive way in making peace in the Holy Land. And we should not be asked to take sides in what is a very complicated political struggle. There is enough guilt, there is enough blame, there is enough pain to go around on all the different sides. Of course we care about the Palestinians and what they have gone through, the loss of land, the loss of homes, the wall, but we also care for the people of Israel and what they too have gone through. A small, radical, fringe, terrorist Palestinian group who is set on their destruction and resorts to suicide bombing? Just remind the speaker that the body has adopted a rule to avoid uh, personal attacks of persons, okay? So please continue. Our concern, I had rabbis come see me. I had the president of the Jewish Federation come see me and ask, what is this about? And I said, we're concerned about the wall. And he said to me, Bob, do you remember how many suicide bombings we used to have in Tel Aviv and Jerusalem? And so we built the wall and we no longer have those suicide bombings. Would you want Al-Qaeda living in your backyard, those who are set on destroying you? As Methodists, we need to do positive things to work for peace in the Holy Land and understand this is a complicated political issue. Your Board of Pensions has created our Central Conference Pension Initiative to create pensions to take care of so many of our African brothers and sisters and pastors in Central Europe and Asia. We have 91,000 participants. We believe this legislation threatens our fiduciary responsibility to take care of 91,000 people. Your board is investing for good 1.5 billion for low-income, affordable housing in the United States, the largest positive investor. We invest in microfinancing around the world. Don't take us away from the table. Let us be involved in a positive way to work for a just peace in the Holy Land. I encourage you to support the majority report. There is speech in favor. All right, um, I'm calling this person right here, yes. Microphone uh, 10 or nine, whichever. Microphone 10. Robert Lee, Western North Carolina Conference Lay Delegate. Friends, I rise to stand in opposition of the majority report and in favor of the minority report. 
I first learned about this issue as a young person attending Candler School of Theology's Youth Theological Initiative on the campus of Emory University. Dr. Beth Corey, our professor at that function, had a passionate interest in this subject. You see, Dr. Corey's cousin, Rachel Corey, was killed by a D9 cat bulldozer that was paid for by U.S. dollars and weaponized by the Israeli army. She unfortunately was not the first nor the last to be killed by home demolition. Friends, if we're trying to show that this is a conference of change, it is time to put our money where our mouth is. It is time to say that we stand up against an oppressor and join hands with the oppressed. It is time to bring about God's reign on earth as we work for peace, justice, and mercy. The majority report is charity without justice. If we continue to invest in any way, we are becoming part of the problem, not part of the solution. My mom always tells me to make sure that my actions and words line up because people will watch me. Now I know that my mother is a wise woman and I hope that we don't have to debate that. I believe that this message rings true to our church. Let us align our voices with the thoughts and words we have committed to pages in discipline. Let us support the minority report and say once and for all, we stand for the least of these. Thank right. you. Your rules allow for one more speech against. One more speech against. I recognize the person in the center of the back section Thank you. Don House, Texas Annual Conference, Lay. I'd like to point out uh, and speak against the minority report. There, we're setting a precedent that I don't think we want to set. One, we're trying to target companies and blame them for making products rather than blaming those in the use of the products. I remember when I was a kid, there was a cartoon that I saw once where there was a, a guy that was intoxicated and he got into an old Model T Ford and drove down the street and he hit a, hit a sign and damaged the sign and the, the community decided who, all right, who was at fault. And they brought the car into the courtroom and, and concluded that it was the car that was at fault and not the drunk driver. Well, that's what we're doing. We're going after the products rather than the use of the products. The other point is that this is the first time, if we, if we use the minority report in passing, it will be the first time the general conference has ever singled out specific companies. I had a conversation with general counsel, with the general board of, of pensions and health benefits about the fiduciary risk or the risk of lawsuit that would be opened up to the general conference where the general conference has identified specific companies for disinvestment. It would be our first time. And indeed it does. It opens us up to the lawsuits by those that hold stocks in companies such as Caterpillar, Motorola, Hewlett Packard, because we would have taken action that may well result in the decrease of those, the prices of those stock. And many of our members own those stocks in retirement funds. So here we're finding some unintended victims here when the intent, I think, of the legislation is to identify and, and identify those with the misuse of the products 
rather than the production of the products themselves. Again, I urge you to vote against the minority report. All right, let me uh, explain our position. We have had three speeches on both sides of this. Uh, we are ready to move forward, but I see some questions, and I can only entertain questions or other kinds of parliamentary matters, so I will not be recognizing green or orange cards. Okay, I saw one first in the back, uh, this gentleman. Yes, sir, would you go to microphone 10, and then I'll come to you. Thank you, Bishop. Uh, I'm Jerry Kula, Pledge Liberia Annual Conference. I have two questions, Bishop. Thank you. The first question has to do with uh, helping us in our decision to vote. Uh, so I, I, in, I've learned that in America, you are free to carry guns. Uh, so. I was thinking in my mind as to whether the gun. Let me, let me interrupt to get clarity, sir. I want to make sure uh, this is beginning to sound like debate. So I'm going to ask you if you have a point of order or if you have a question for information, get to it quickly without illustrating it. All right. Then I will leave that and go to my second question. My second question is since investment is a bilateral issue. What has the church done to engage the government of America on this issue? All right, I think we can answer that question. Uh, can someone from the committee answer that question? Bonnie Martin, that is a very appropriate question. Um, I've been privileged in the last uh, three months to have direct conversation with the General Board of Pensions and Health Benefits and have a history of the dates and the times where there has been conversation. It hasn't gotten anybody to where they want to be, but there is hope that through conversation there could be more changes. Now, you asked about the U.S. involvement, and that is the white elephant, the elephant in the room. Um, the next challenge, I believe, is for us to use our United Methodist Investments as leverage. Let, let's, stay, let's stay with the question. I'm skirting a line trying to honor the, our diversity. This is to keep us around making a decision about substitution. Don't want to drift into debating the substance of the issue any more than we have to. Please continue. OK, she's finished. Your question? Microphone five. Denise Walton, South Georgia Annual Conference, clergy. As I review the minority report, the question that arises for me is around the companies that are listed uh, for consideration. Is this an exhaustive list of the companies uh, that are engaging in these practices? And secondly, um, I, th I think that's the question. Is All this right. an exhaustive list? Can you answer that question? Uh, thank you for your question. Uh, no, the makers of the minority report wanted to be very limited in the scope of what we're offering. We felt something vague or broad like divest from all companies involved with the occupation would lead to a lot of questions about how large a group that is or what the edges of it might look like. So in, we wanted to be very limited in scope. There are other companies, uh, but we want to just limit it to three. All right, thank you. We have three and three. I, you are ready to vote by your rules and list. Okay. Um, please let's make sure that these are genuinely parliamentary inquiries that we're not prolonging the debate by debatable questions. All right. I'm going to ask for the uh, person at the back in the center. Um, they haven't gotten to the mic yet. <laughs> All right. Thank you. Yeah, not, not the gentleman at number seven, the person at microphone eight. Thank you. Microphone eight. This is Rodolfo C. Beltran, Middle Philippines Annual Conference. My question is this. 
This is an investment covered by stocks with the companies mentioned in the action. My question is, are these stocks in particular having a period of reselling or redeeming? Are we not liable in for, for the soon by these companies if we divest it? Okay. We have uh, been drifting uh, a little bit too far into getting into debate. I think you need to decide which one of these you want to perfect. So let us move to a vote on whether you want to substitute the minority report or not. If you wish to substitute the minority report, you will vote one yes and press send. If you do not want to support the minority report being considered, this doesn't mean you're voting for it, but that you want it to be the one we consider. If you would rather deal with the committee's report, you would vote two, no, and press send. Please vote now. Five seconds. This ballot is closed. We'll wait for the results. You have decided not to substitute the minority report. We will be dealing with the committee's report. We have uh, been so busy working and doing such a good job, the chair inadvertently worked you right past your break. And you've been so good, you, you, you cooperated with it. So I think uh, if you'll forgive that indiscretion and let me reward you with a break at this time, I would suggest that we return and be in your seats by 4.20 and we can get another item done before we're done. We're in recess.